Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixorifs, our writer is XP, and congratulations to Team Glare, Team Allay, Team Copper Golem, delete whichever is appropriate. At the time of writing we have absolutely no idea which mob is going to win the yesterday's vote, but in the meantime it's a good thing the Hermitcraft server has innovations that'll do their jobs for them. Doc M will now sell you remote access to inventories on the other side of the server, B00 already looks like a bush that grumbles every time it gets dark, and Grian will push all your buttons. But all these are understatements, because the Hermits continue to push what this game is capable of, both in terms of technical achievements and building prowess, but also occasionally the player's sanity. So before reality folds in on itself and we find ourselves at the Mountains of Madness, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Doc M, who tries to slow down the pace a little by touring the server on a donkey. Naturally for Doc though, it's the fastest donkey on the server, but he still manages to take in all the sights without them becoming a blur in his rear view. Yes, the donkeys are cars this season and we will accept no alternative. It was a bit weird when he drove through the door of the gym though. Oh, this is so cool. It's like some fitness studio. Man, she's so good with the, with the armor stand things. Having rode like the wind, Doc brings the lightning to the grand opening of Octagon, but we'll save discussing that for Ren Dog's segment because nobody brings the hype like Ren. Instead, we'll talk about the other thing Doc did this week because it deserves highlighting, underlining with red pen, and a note from Mojang that just says, see us after class. Thanks to a discovery by his friends Fallen Breath and Process, Doc has been able to sync items from his inventory with an inventory slot in a hopper, allowing him to use rockets from a chest in the spawn chunks while keeping his inventory fully topped up, or enderpearling back to spawn from anywhere on the server. It can also slurp up sand from his inventory and store it somewhere else, as we see when he goes mining in a desert later. If this sounds absolutely wild, that's because it is, so we highly recommend watching Doc's video and the videos from the folks who discovered it, but in the meantime he pitches it to Mumbo, who immediately agrees that he needs to sell this technology like a subscription, and we'll see where it goes from here. Like, we up, you know, you look into the hopper, update, suppress the looking into the hopper in short, and then the game thinks the stack you have and the stack that is there is the same, right? And I then mean, that is ridiculous. That is... <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to say. It's technology XB Crafted could have used when digging out his latest dome and lining it with a ton of iron blocks. Since this is the dome which faces out to sea, XB sets up a vast hangar with an airlock door and starts building a submarine dock. Initially, he has some concerns about the structure of the sub itself. It's just not right. It's too thick. <laughs> But once he switches from dirt to a more watertight material, adds propellers and antenna to the outside, it seems to be much more satisfying. So if you want to like and sub, this is the place to do it. <laughs> it's not bad. The tropical fish seem to agree, although they might not want to hang around so close to the intake pipes. B00 has some plumbing to appreciate too. Since B Dubs last built it, Tango Tech has been busy retrofitting auto sorters to the wood storage building, and even installing an auto wood farm next door. B Dubs' instinct is to do stone next, and he eventually tutorials his way through a stone storage building that really starts to establish an industrial vibe outside of Big Eyes Town. A boo boo that I did. Well, not that I did, but that I'm going to do. Inside of the town, though, B-Dubs discovers the cake shop Scar built last week, and in the process of having his cake, he eats it. It's a cute little bakery. Boom. What does that mean? Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh no! Stuck in here! <laughs> At least it's a good excuse for a change of headwear and the burning of a few gifts. Mumbo's volcano, on the other hand, will bake your potatoes just right, even if there is now a zombie apparently staffing the thing. Zombies potatoes? World War P? The Walking Fed? Up with all of these potato based puns. Oh wow! Potato volcano! Absolutely magnificent. It was a little bit terrifying, a little bit dangerous, but uh. Oh, that was very enjoyable. I... Now, question. Was that worth a diamond when I only had three? But the rumble coming from his mountain base is of an entirely different sort. Having wireframed out the areas he wanted to build, Mumbo establishes a colourful mountain town in a variety of different shapes and sizes. It's a beautiful addition to the armchair, but as the paths and staircases connecting them start to go in, he's interrupted by two distractions. The first is Doc M defying the laws of physics by giving him a quantum stack of fireworks and then disappearing into thin air. That, is, that feels uh, illegal, Doc. It feels like you're doing illegal things here. The other is Grian going AFK on top of a tree, which Mumbo decides to resolve by sending him to space and then sideways a bit. He's off! <laughs> there he is! 
Grian, the commander of a new private jet, is off. It could be worse. Grian's cobblestone box could have been a gravestone for Mumbo, since he's already made a habit of making one of those for another member of the Botum family. Pearlescent Moon has been decorating the area for Halloween, and Impulse and Scar make such an impact on the landscape that they may as well be decorated too. Y y oh, that's great. I gotta admit, your ha head looks a little bit naked without your hat, though. <laughs> I look hideous, divert your eyes. The landscape is looking very different every time people come to buy Botum, which is why the tourist map she adds should be helpful. Pearl's own contributions to the local geography are definitely worth a visit, as she connects her mountain to scars and shapes it around Cub's neighbouring Dripstone Canyon. And when your neighbour is Cub fan, a friendly game of spleef is rarely far behind. Oh, oh. Yep. Hi, <laughs> there we go! Ooh. Okay, I'm out. Well done, well done. <laughs> While Botum continues to shape itself, one duo had their shape figured out from the beginning. Octagon's grand opening was always going to be flashy, what with the giant antenna and Rendog staying up all night to craft fireworks, but when Doc wires the whole thing up to a lightning rod, you know things are gonna get loud. Doc, this isn't good enough. We have potential customers here, man. Oh, there we go. Oh my god, it's growing up! Whoa, nice. Whoa. The grand opening is indeed grand, and the fact that they gave out coupons for their first customers barely matters when they were selling stock before they were even open. The red carpet rolls out, and the profits roll in. Dr. M77, <laughs> what an <laughs> insane happened. grand opening that was, dude. TFC finds a different kind of red carpet waiting for him when he next visits Botum. I'm pretty sure I saw some... Hello? That's not exactly my favorite kind of- He's there to hunt down some slime balls, but the G-Train has the redstone components he was looking for after all. He wanted to arrange some sticky pistons under his tree farm to raise or remove a wall and allow water to flow through the farm. Unfortunately, his redstone skills are a little rusty, but if TFC is known for anything, it's perseverance. We know the title of this one. Redstone fail. <laughs> if Impulse is known for anything, it's Big Eye Rons. Wait a minute. Despite competitors advertising outside the walls, Impulse's factory is still coming along in leaps, bounds, and occasional mooing noises. The brown mushrooms are the latest contribution to the candy room, which he's still plugging the dark spots in, and yet you cowards didn't vote for the glare. And here's another take for you. So it's a good thing everyone voted for the glare. We, we still don't know. Ordering some more trees from Gemini Tay will probably help too, and maybe Impulse can collect them himself now he has a fleet of delivery trucks at his disposal. Overshadowing the swag and rickshaw parked in the neighbouring bays, the iDimpy delivery trucks even stop at his candy shop, which now has a thematically appropriate humbug-striped roof. It looks pretty good. I, I waxed everything, so it's not going to change any more. Uh, okay, well, I lied. There's some blocks that still need to turn. Jem gets to build a much more traditional canopy too at Corrales' place, because a man is not an island. His base, however, is. And this week, Corrales transforms the island into a luxury resort for himself and whoever will fit into the guest houses, the garage, and the speedboat. Plus the Grian in the attic, of course. This explosion of building took 12 hours of dedicated work interspersed with the mild trolling of an AFK Grian and a spleef round. Was it worth it? Yes. I, l I love it. I love it a lot. Here's hoping he can pay for it now that the derp coin gambling becomes a fun drain on his wallet. Oh, no, 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 your luck's turning around. This is not even my time, I can just be spending them all day. <laughs> Ready to welcome guests as well, Cubfan135 makes a point to add a hidden horse stables to the canyon road, prompted by some sentient foliage that drove by. This is an inspired build, except, uh, yeah, 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 check, check it out. Remember last time you came here, you said that you didn't have a place to tie up your horse? Yes? Well, well, <gasps> we got a little stable set up now here. <laughs> but the canyon itself is more likely to come over for a dinner now that Cub has converted a big area around it into an orange concrete desert and started to encroach on the nearby woods. That's not to mention the secret speed tunnel to the Botum Town that we didn't talk about last week because hey, secret. But now he let BOO use it too, we guess the cat's out of the bag. It's a speedy way of getting on the Botum land to get on Botum nerves. In short, do not ask for whom the bell tolls, it's BDubs' horse. There we go. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, sort of like a double feature there. See the water, obviously it yeah, activates the bell, so... On the topic of biome expansion, False Symmetry throws her base into the spooky zone, now it's officially the fun half of October. Though adding the deformed petrified trees and inhabited giant tree stumps turns out to have many more layers to it after she announces she'll go as Shrek for Halloween. Although, very terrifying. Not gonna lie, pretty, pretty terrifying. But I may or may not 
be an ogre. Things quickly take a turn for the Mimi, as False makes the Tree Stump Hill film accurate. And look, we're not opposed to having an outhouse as part of your Minecraft base, but it probably shouldn't be the entrance, and it especially shouldn't be a drop entrance. So that's for interior shrekerating, now how about some outer detail? Well, we see Zombie Cleo apply the miniature block window sills as per their agreement with Joe Hilt, and she runs us through the very convoluted castle yards that have been plaguing her for quite a while now. This area is going to get a bit laggy very quickly. <laughs> Actually, it's probably not. We're probably okay. Well, that's fine. It just so happens that when the thing was built, people weren't much concerned with anyone trying to recreate it in Minecraft. Luckily, we can call this negative space, and it turns out one can do plenty with it when armed with an armor stand book. It comes out there, swirls around here, goes underneath, goes around and swirls around these little courtyard bits, and then it comes back out here and it swirls around once again. It's been a job. It's been a job. If you've been wondering where the video- No stranger to medieval arts, Zedaf takes up alchemy. Having already made a patently insane potion brewer last season, Zed realises it could be improved by just doubling the amount of slime blocks. But also, look, getting delivered apples <laughs> from this distance huh, is incredibly satisfying. Through a few experiments and some not at all excessive redstone, he's able to quadruple the distance he can auto throw an item. So the Combruta 2.0 coming in future will be sending in the potion ingredients while scoring three pointers. Great then that Cubfan just happens to open a slime shop this week. Not great then that Zed orders his slime from Grian instead, and the two of them get stuck trying to out-British each other. He gave me two stacks and he only wants two diamonds for it? No way! I was I was going to pay way more than that. Hey, can I have eight? He's giving them back? Oh, he's giving me more slime. <laughs> That's how this works. I give him more diamonds then. <laughs> Stop! Oh no. Oh, okay. He's going away. All right. I can do this all day. That's the trick of choosing what material you're building a base out of, and Tango Tech quickly finds out he didn't choose the best ones. Okay, the problem is he chose the best ones, but no one's selling them. Okay, the problem is people already sold them to someone who isn't Tango. I don't want Deep Slate, I want Cobbled. It's kind of disappointing. Who else sells this stuff? Though Deep Slate Market greets him with a firm, I don't know, Basalt is at least farmable. And so Tango makes a Basalt Generator, though doubles it for a good measure because lava spills slower in the overworld and crafting pistons is less of a nuisance than going to the nether. So Fifi's cave time lapse is back on. And so is the iron farm, now that the villagers don't just randomly die from fall damage for one reason or another. Yeah, see, I think I might need to keep that water around for another tick or maybe two. I think what I can do is... Eh. And finally, there's good times with Scar, and he will show you the world. He'll also show you what for. Scar, what are you doing? Scar? As if the mountains of Botum weren't looking glorious already, Scar goes into detail, mostly focusing on breaking up the grey of the stone with darker and lighter accents. It's where the snowy peaks come in very handy, and the core of the hills gets split with tectonic crags. Too bad as he builds the Botum rock, his finances just happen to hit rock bottom. All Scar has to show for the giant hourglasses is a few IOUs and some pocket change which may actually be worth quite a bit when used strategically, but don't make for as pompous a display as a pile of diamond blocks with nothing in it. And an armor um, cat certificate. Oh, wow, I, I just really butchered that word. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is PixelRiffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. It's prime time to prep a costume, and sometimes you just want someone's base to go as a giant poop emoji for Halloween. Click the end screen to check out Zloy pranking a server mate, as well as building a whole fleet of pirate ships. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.